Hi, I'm Mark, and thanks for tuning in. This is the wrap-up of our outdoor pizza cabinet build. In this video, we'll cover building the kick base, selecting the countertops, painting the cabinets, installation, and adding electrical to the cabinets. If you missed part one where we covered the material selection and the construction of the cabinets, I encourage you to go back and watch part one. I'll put a link in the video description below. We left off in the last video with the cabinet boxes built and the drawers and doors already installed. We can now start building the kick base that the cabinets will sit on. As I mentioned before, all of the skills that you learn in this project can be applied to building most any type of cabinet. But unlike building a bathroom or kitchen cabinet, we need to think about the outside elements when building the kick base. So part of the, my concern about building an outdoor cabinet out of wood, and this is true of any outdoor project, is that wood rots, as we all know. And it rots faster when it touches the ground. So my plan is, is to use this cellular PVC, which I got at the home center. I'm not that familiar with the stuff, and it is pretty pricey. So I've optimized as much as I can in, the, in making a very detailed cut list, which will be included in the plan. And I'm also, prior to the use of it, I'm gonna fool around with a couple of scrap pieces so that I can get familiar with how well it glues and how well it holds screws. The plan for this kick base is to build a simple box for the cabinets to sit on. The PVC we are using is typically used for trim applications on a house, things like corner boards and window casings. The manufacturer claims it can be worked using normal woodworking tools. It comes in nominal sizes that normal wood trim pieces come in, like 1x4 or 1x6. Just like wood, it's really undersized. So a one by four board is actually three quarter by three and a half. The stuff I got has an embossed wood grain on one side and a smooth face on the other. I'm gonna put the wood grain on the inside. I'm really not too fond of the fake grain look. After cutting the pieces to length, drilling it for pocket screws, and knocking off the sharp edges with the sanding block, I started the glue up process. I glued up each joint clamped it, and then drove some pocket screws in, and then moved on to the next joint. The PVC glue grabs right away, but it doesn't really seem to reach full strength for a couple of days. The really great thing about this material is it won't rot and the water won't affect it. Well that takes care of the kick for now. Let's talk about the countertops. I really wrestled with what material to use. Wood countertops are a logical first choice for a woodworker but I just don't think they would hold up well long term. I thought about using quartz, which is a popular choice for indoor kitchens these days. But it's pricey, especially for an outdoor kitchen like ours. Part of the inspiration for my design came while visiting a local farm that has an outdoor kitchen. The farm has become quite the attraction, where you can go pick your own produce or hang out and they will fix you a meal. During the weekend, pizza is one of their menu items. Once they get going there, they can crank out pies every few minutes for the crowd. Not only did watching them help me with my pizza making techniques, I took note of their prep setup, since the whole kitchen is outdoors. They use stainless steel tables to build their pies. I was told they are durable and they're a nice surface to spread dough. After seeing how well the stainless steel countertops work for the farm, I approached a local sheet metal fabricator in effort to get something similar for my pizza station. The fabricator was able to give me some suggestions on best practices for an outdoor kitchen like mine. We discussed making the overhang of the countertop large enough to act as an umbrella over the cabinets to protect them from the weather. To prepare for the stainless, I first built the countertop substrate using 3 quarter ACX plywood and then primed the plywood on all six sides. Once the ACX substrate was attached to the cabinets, the stainless drops over it and acts like a hat. It fits just like a glove. With all the cabinetry finished, it was time to start thinking about how to get them painted. We could just get out a brush and roller and go to town, but I've decided there's enough to do here that I'm gonna set up my paint booth and spray the cabinets. 
My paint booth is just a combination of folding cardboard walls, sheet plastic, and a cardboard on the floor. The obvious goal is to keep the rest of my shop from getting a coat of paint as well. After the booth is set up, I roll in a large fan which keeps the air moving and directs the overspray from settling where I don't want it. I like the finish that spraying gives you. In general, it applies a nice even coat of paint or finish with no brush marks. It gives you a finish that's only matched by a factory. But it takes a lot of setup time. And that means masking. Since my goal is to have a two-tone finish that matches my house, it takes even more masking. After spraying a first coat of primer on all surfaces, I laid down a coat of white paint on the interior of the cabinet. I'm using a good quality exterior low sheen paint made for cabinetry and trim. After waiting overnight for the first coat of paint to cure, I do a quick sand between the coats before putting down the second coat. I just use a brown paper bag to sand between the coats. It's coarse enough to knock off the dust nibs on soft, fresh paint, but not too abrasive to actually remove material. Spraying is great for the reasons that I mentioned, but it's not necessary to run out and buy a sprayer. A brush and a roller would have worked just fine for this project. After tearing down my spray booth, I let the cabinets continue to dry for a couple of days. With each day, the paint will continue to get harder and harder. I have a nice spot picked out to install the outdoor kitchen next to my barbecue grill. It's located under my patio cover, which will give the cabinets some protection from the rain and the sun. The patio I have is brick pavers, which is not a nice smooth surface. Consequently, it's not even close to level. But one benefit of making the kick separate from the cabinet boxes is dealing with this kind of uneven surface. I can scribe the kick to match the dips and bumps of the paver surface, and then easily take it back into the shop and make adjustments with the assistance of a power plane. It probably took a dozen back and forth iterations, but I ended up with the kick fitting nearly perfectly with the bumpy bricks below. Next, I use a hammer drill to put a couple of holes for the anchors, then fasten the kick to the patio with Tapcron screws. As I mentioned, the PVC is fairly soft material, so I added a couple of fender washers just for insurance. The result is rock solid. Now it's no brainer to get the cabinets level. Just set them on the kick. With the cabinets fastened to the kick, I really could smell the barn as well as the thought of making my first pizza with the new setup. When I realized that I had jumped the gun a bit, the plan was to have some electricity in the station in case I wanted to use a mixer, or for sure add some lighting. I had forgotten all about it. I needed to cut in for some junction boxes and figure out how I was going to run the wiring. Truth is, this should have been done before I put paint on the cabinets. It would have been a lot easier to drill holes and cut out for boxes in my garage. This is fairly easy electrical work. You can get all the parts you need at the local hardware store. But if electrical isn't your thing or you don't have access to an existing outlet, making it fairly easy to daisy chain like I did, this is where you might want to bring in a licensed electrician. When we first got the pizza oven for Christmas, we were anxious to get it fired up. We set it up on a rickety portable table. Talk about an accident waiting to happen. We also learned during those first few pizza making sessions is things happen fast when cooking in a 900 degree oven. Your pizza can quickly turn from browning up nicely to on fire, unless you keep a close eye on it. A standard table or 36 inch Kai cabinet is too low to monitor things, which is why our pizza cabinet is so much higher. Not only is crouching over to see what's going on a challenge, the oven is pretty dark inside, so you don't see if things are starting to burn until smoke starts coming out, and then it's way too late. We tried using a flashlight, which is fine until you're working alone. Balancing a flashlight and scooping up your pizza to turn is a three-hand operation, which brings me to my solution. I added a gooseneck LED light that I can position to shoot right inside the oven. It has been a savior and prevented that 
sorry, yours got burnt a bit, apology. I mounted it nearby and ran it to the pizza cabinet outlet for power. There's lots of choices online for gooseneck lights. My recommendation is get one with the longest neck possible. You can set it to illuminate the inside or move it out of the way when it's not needed. I'll include a link for this one in the plans. By the way, one more plug for the build plans. I have detailed plans that include cut list, step-by-step -step assembly instructions, and the sources for all the materials and hardware that I used in the construction of these cabinets. If you're interested, just drop me an email and I'll explain how to get your copy. I'll include the information in the video description below. For those of you that already reached out for plans, be sure and send me some pictures of what your build comes out like. I also want to thank you for your support, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up and leaving a comment. I hope you'll tune back in soon. Bye for now.